Welcome to Ask AI, the podcast that brings you insightful interviews and news from the world of Canadian artificial intelligence. This episode is sponsored by Microsoft Canada. Go to microsoft.com slash AI and check out their free AI business school to start building intelligence into your solutions today. We're also sponsored by Cinchi, the global leader in data fabric technology. Visit Cinchi.com to learn how to eliminate integration and turbocharge your AI transformation. Hi, this is Carolyn Peltier, your host for the Ask AI Team Check-Ins. So an important component of interacting naturally with technology is communication. When we talk to our AI assistant, we hope that it knows what we're asking for or you know, what we're trying to accomplish. And so today we have Ivan Zhang, one of the co-founders of Cohere, who's gonna talk about how their platform helps computers parse the components of language like syntax, semantics, and context in order to build machines that understand the world. Stay tuned. So Ivan, I'd love to hear more about you, about your professional background, about your educational background and your path uh, towards co-founding Cohere. Yeah, absolutely. Um, proud immigrant uh, from China. I came here when I was eight with my family. Um, after that, went to U of T for computer science, uh, dropped out after two years to work at my friend's biotech startup. Nice. Um, spent a few years in the industry, just doing general software engineering, backend stuff. Um, eventually met uh, one of my co-founders, Aiden, and then I met Nick, who's the other co-founder in undergrad. Um, we kind of saw that at Google, uh, they were inserting, you know, little BERT models here and there, and it drastically improved whatever NLU use case it was uh, applied to do. And so we thought it was a great opportunity and the timing was you know, amazing to, to start a startup in 2019. And so that's why we found a career. Absolutely. And, and that, so that transition kind of from academia to, uh, founding a startup, um, in the NLP space, um, it seems like it's a ripe moment right now, uh, with those models, as you mentioned, bird and the transformer models coming out recently. Can you talk about that transition from academia to um co-founding a startup yeah absolutely um i i don't actually have any experience uh doing nlp in academia at all uh, most of my research was on inference and sort of like model efficiency um so i i would say i'm very much an outsider to nlp uh where i added a lot of value was with my software engineering and sort of like system design skills um in the early days to help cook your scale um, and nowadays sort of like coming from a product engineering background, you know, it's really helped in how we think about products for the end user and for the end developers that we want to serve. So it sounds like, you know, the software engineering component of running NLP models, uh, in production is, is very important. And so, um, for individuals that, you know, want to work at a startup in NLP, but don't have a background in NLP, um, but are perhaps strong in software engineering, is that an encouraging path? And, and can you talk a bit about the skill sets needed to be successful at these startups? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's always going to be a research component. You know, this field is still so young. There's a ton of innovation to still be had. Um, but the skill sets required to bring these innov innovations to production and into the hands of developers and users. I mean, that's just, you know, normal product building, very standard, like back end engineering skills that we still need. Right. And I think um, if you look at the makeup of our organization, you know, a, like a big portion of it are machine learning engineers, but we have product managers, product designers, um, you know, HR people, uh, back end engineers, front end engineers. I mean, it, it really is, um, you know, a product company, um, with, with a research component. And so uh, all skill sets from all backgrounds are, are required. Yeah. Okay, great. Ivan, thank you so much. And, um, and so could you, um, give us a bit of a summary of what's new at Cohere these days? Yeah, absolutely. We just released, you know, our next generation of models on both the generation and repre representation side, right? We have an extra large generation model in beta and we have our state of the art embedding models. Um, 
And also we are releasing our first application on top of these language model platforms Nice. Uh, later this month. Um, it's a, it's gonna be like an end to end, really easy to use text classifier. Um, and we also just announced our series B. We raised 125 million, uh, led by Tiger, uh, our other investors index, Radical, Section 32 also participated. Um, so it's pretty exciting. That's wonderful. Right Congratulations. Now. That's that's great news. Great for Canadian yeah. AI. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you mentioned uh, these new models, these new products. Um, who are you helping? Who's like, who are you looking to help with these new models, these new products and, and how does it help them? So we really see it as, you know, we're building a fundamental platform for machine learning engineers first and foremost. So the new models will, will improve our quality for whatever downstream tasks um, our users want to want to perform. Um, and as for the products, it's really our first headway into targeting the rest of us, right? That the rest of the develop the rest of the developer community who might not have that NLP background, you know, we still want to provide specific solutions for them. Um, and I, I think text classification is sort of our first bet uh, in that it will serve a lot of developers without that NLP experience. Great. And, and you mentioned text classification. So what other NLP tests are you seeing that are um, in demand um, on, on the Cohere platform? Quite frankly, it's really obvious stuff, right? I mean, yep. it's the problems that have been around for decades, right? Entity extraction, text summarization, um, all this stuff, there's, there, there lacks a connecting piece between these end problems mm -hmm. and the actual language model technology. Um, we hope to close that gap through the products that we're releasing this year. And, and so you, we're talking about these new larger models uh, being released. Um, and um, as we know, with these release of, of big models, there's always, you know, a chance of misuse. There's bias in these models. Um, we've seen it with various examples. Could you talk a bit about the responsible use approach that Cohere is taking? Um, yeah, I mean, we're super committed to safety. Like, I, I think we've quantitatively and qualitatively done all the checks to make sure that our models are, you know, the safest on the market. Um, we've invested a ton of engineering into making that happen, whether that's, you know, very clever tricks to, you know, make sure our data doesn't contain abusive or toxic text. Um, or sort of like inference time, you know, um, filters. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we do invest a lot to make sure that our technology is used in a, in a safe and non-abusive way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've noticed um, um, a lot of transparency between, you know, the limitations and the scoping of these particular uh, large language models uh, with the release of these model cards. Could you talk a bit about um, um, their, their use and why they're important? Yeah, I mean, we we definitely want to document, you know, exactly what goes into these models, how we evaluate them. Um, so those are, you know, everything anyone can see on our model cards that we publish. We also publish, you know, engineering and like technical methods um, that we've applied to our models to make them safer. You know, if you look if you look it up, like we, we do have papers on the, on that work. Um, so yeah, we've we've invested a lot in safety, and it, it's definitely paid off. Um, it matters to our end users that, you know, our, our models, when they use it in production, they don't spew very toxic or abusive language. Right? Absolutely. All right, Ivan, thanks so much. And and can you let me know who's involved in, in building Cohere? Um, obviously, my other co-founders, Nick and Hayden, uh, and also all the, you know, all our employees and teams at Cohere, right? Generation team, embedding team, backend team, frontend team, inference team, designers, product managers. Uh, people team, nice. um, biz ops. I think, you know, it, it takes a whole village to really bring these models to the hands of developers. So Ooh. shout outs to everyone there. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. And and uh, you're headquartered in Toronto. Uh, what was the decision making behind uh, that decision to be headquartered in Toronto, Ontario? Quite frankly, the three of us thought Toronto was the best city in the world. I mean, it, you know, there's such a great diverse culture. Um, there's so much good food, uh, such a great stream of talent. Um, it, it really is a special place to be and, and we're happy to be here. We're happy to stay here. Um, so, you know, we want to be a big business in Toronto to sort of 
keep our talent here and yeah, I mean, make, make Canada, put Canada on the map. Great, Ivan, thank you so much. And can you talk to me about what's next at Cohere? I think we're just going to work really, 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 really hard on building applications on top of the language models Nice. Um, and continue to improve our language models as well. Um, I think we want to make this technology as accessible as possible. Okay. Um, we're also thinking about uh, new offices. Uh, Montreal looks very interesting. Yeah. That's uh, more, more news there. Cool. Um, um, yeah. Great. And if uh, people wanted to sign up, what's the sign-up process like? Oh, yeah. So you can go to our website, uh, cohere.com, and you can get started and you can sign up without a credit card. We give you free credits to just play around with. Amazing. Um, we have a really, really cool interface. You can you know, just interact with these models and see what they can do. Um, and feel free to reach out if you have any issues. Great. And how can they best reach out? What's the best channel to uh, reach out? Uh, you can try my email or Twitter. I'm on there, uh, 1BNZH or Ivan at Cohere.ai. Amazing. Thank you so much, Ivan, for joining us on this Ask AI Teams check-in. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks so much to our guest, Ivan, for joining us on this Ask AI Team check-ins. As you heard, it's really easy to sign up for Cohere, and we've included the sign-up link. Also, we included some links to the publications that Ivan mentioned throughout the team check-ins. And finally, we linked to their Series B announcement. Thanks for joining me. This is Carolyn Peltier, your Ask AI Team Check-ins host. Until next time. This has been a production of Ask AI, a nonprofit dedicated to advancing awareness and understanding of Canada's world-class artificial intelligence sector. Your host was Carolyn Pelletier. Series producer was Chris McClellan, and the series editor was James Fajardo. We'd like to thank our series sponsors, Microsoft Canada, producers of the Free AI Business School, and Cinchi, the dataware platform that makes integration obsolete. We'd love to hear about your latest research, product launches, or organizational news. To request a team check-in, visit askai.org.